This is the very first episode of Maintenance is a Drag, so thank you so much for tuning in. It means the world to my entire team. This is an independently run podcast, which means there is no production team that has done this before doing this show. <laughs> we are doing this ourselves. This is a product of Mercury Stardust Media, and my team has been working endlessly to try to make this better every single week. The audio is a little bit different than it currently is during this episode. The visuals are a little bit different than it is during the episode. And everything's a little slightly not great. But we are learning every single week we are doing an episode. And there already are several that are recorded. And each week we will promise that it will grow and we will get better. Because we are worth the time it takes to learn a new skill. And we're learning 10 all at once. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for getting the word out and engaging with this show. That is the best way to support me right now. And I hope you enjoy the show because we sure do enjoy filming it ourselves and um, recording it. It is a blast to help strangers on the internet and getting to know world famous drag performers of all kinds. So thank you for tuning in. And until next time, uh, make sure to uh, fix that thing that's broken. <laughs> I said my cash fragrance phrase already. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs> the bottle opener. Can she open it? She can't open it. She can of do course. so much. She can. Is it a twist? Fix it's a twist. It's a twist. It's a twist. <laughs> mercury, Mercury, Stardust. She's a beacon of hope in the darkest night. Mercury, Mercury, Stardust. She'll teach you. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thank you so much for tuning in today. What a good day to do fixy stuff. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for coming in here today. My name is Mercury Stardust. I am, in fact, the trans handy ma'am, and my pronouns are she, they. Today, we are going to be joined by an amazing drag king, someone that I've admired for a very long time and is my spouse mouse's favorite performer. Please put your hands together to the extraordinary Landon Sider. Oh my God. Oh my God, hi. Hello, your theme song is so perfect for my metal hair today. It, was so <laughs> it perfect. is. Yes, yeah, so You got glad. my memo. Yeah, <laughs> and I do have a hammer in my pants just for you. Oh, yeah, I do I love hammering pants. <laughs> a lesbian who critiques masculinity for a living, I needed my detachable hammer in my pants, right? Oh. I yeah. love it. <laughs> I have a power drill, but it's in the bedroom. So. Oh, you do. You know what I've wanted for a long time, Landon, is I want to get a tattoo of an impact driver and a drill between my thighs. I think that would be really funny. So when I'd people are be, like... It would be funnier if I knew what an impact driver was. <laughs> <laughs> Landon, you're gonna fit in. You're gonna do so good today. Okay, Landon. Before we start calling people and we take in their questions and all the things, uh, what's your experience with maintenance? Where are you at, my friend? I am in the. I love a good hardware store, um, <laughs> but I love it because it's just a huge craft store for me. Um, uh, so I love the glues and the expandable foams. Um, I do love some drill bits, um, Ooh, but that's yeah. a different conversation for a different podcast. I think. Um, yeah, I think yeah. so too. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I, I it comes up a lot in my life, especially as a lesbian with straight cis woman friends, um, yeah. they're constantly complaining about how straight men can never find the dial on a crescent wrench. And I want to tell you that any every single lesbian will find the dial on that crescent wrench. So I'm not gonna lie, to I'm I actually have an automatic crescent wrench dial. Oh. So I mean, mine works in super speed. <laughs> I, I am I am envious of your crescent wrench super speed. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of women are as well. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, you gotta get that designer crescent wrench, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Landon, all that being said, do you wanna call people and help them with their things? 
I do. I'm happy to have you correct everything that I say incorrectly. And I'm happy to learn as much as I can hey, today. We're yeah. learning every single day, my friend. So let's learn together, okay? Awesome. Let's play yes. the first voicemail and go to that handyman hotline. My name is Hannah and my pronouns are she, hers. And you are going to love my issue. I have watched all of your videos trying to figure out what I can do about this little dent I punctured in my ceiling. How do you puncture a dent in your ceiling, you might ask? A stripper pole is <laughs> Um, so it's not, I didn't so screw it in. It is technically renter friendly, but because of the tension pole, I did over, um, overturn it. <laughs> I, uh, and I punched into the ceiling. So only a little bit. The ceiling is still intact. You could see a little bit of a shadow. Um, so how would you fix it? <laughs> I've seen some of your videos, obviously, and I'm thinking maybe it, like a Presto patch? <laughs> I'm not sure if you would fill the whole space with like a, a plaster or a caulk. Maybe it'd be too heavy. Because once again, this isn't a full hole in the ceiling. Yeah. It's just a punch in the ceiling. It's kind of like <laughs> um, I knew that you would be the person to go to, and um, I can't wait to hear back. Thank you, Mercury. That is a perfect problem to have. I'm so that is, excited. <laughs> that is so good. That exists in the world. <laughs> that is honestly, my spouse had a uh, a pole in their the in, in our living room for like years. I know exactly what this problem is. So let's give Hannah a call. Hey Hannah, how's it going? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, we're doing so good. Uh, thank you for asking such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you. <laughs> so first I'm and foremost, enjoy it. yeah, of course. I mean, your misery is my joy. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> All that being said, has anything changed? Has the hole gotten bigger? Has anything gotten worse? <laughs> nope, the hole is the same. So we can thank it for being consistent at least. <laughs> so Unlike any jokes. boyfriend I've ever had. <laughs> so many jokes about holes. So many so jokes many. about holes. So many. I'm trying my best to be appropriate. We, we know it is yeah. a dent. <laughs> it's a dent. It's a dent. Okay. okay. So how it's how dent. big is the dent? So that's the thing. For what it lacks in depth, it makes up for in width. It is oh, nine Jesus. inches wide. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Hannah. Wow. But that, you is get Hannah. that is that is girthy. <laughs> okay. Hannah, have you worked with any, like, drywall material, any patches before? No. The most I've done is used, like, caulk to fill in little holes and corners and stuff. I'm familiar okay. with caulk as well. I am familiar I'm... with caulking front doors, back doors, <laughs> and leaving my tools behind so they can caulk themselves when I'm gone. <laughs> I'm you know going to tell you this right now. This is one job, Landon, where yeah. I don't advise using caulk. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am going to advise to use something called joint compound. Does any, are you familiar with that, Hannah? I am. I remember it from some of your videos. Good. That's a great start. Joint compound is basically like pancake batter. Okay. And here's the thing about joint compound. It's basically more affordable than any of those other things that people are going to suggest. They're always going to say, get this kind of spackle, get that kind of spackle, get the pink stuff, blah, 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 blah. But the reality is joint compound is actually really cheap. You can buy it by pint, quart, gallon. Okay. And you'll be able to get like a, a quart size one for like three or four bucks. And it's the stuff that we use when we install drywall. So it's mm -hmm. literally the stuff that professionals will be using. And the best part about it is that it's very strong. Once it, once it dries, and it does take a while to dry, it's very, very strong, okay? So, and it's really mm -hmm. easy to work with. So what you're gonna wanna get is some size of joint compound, okay? And mm -hmm. I would advise to get drywall, like a um, container of some kind. Um, you know, I will use like a drywall, tray and uh then a joint knife a joint knife is just a fancy term to say a putty knife okay um mm -hmm. but about six inches you get those three things that are going to run you a total i know landon i know what i said landon i know what i said landon <laughs> six inches. i mean isn't that like the nation's average for a putty knife 
I mean, yeah, it is. Honestly, I know we're joking, but it is the average length of a putting knife, okay? <laughs> but all that being said, I it's going to run you a total of probably 16 bucks to get everything you need, okay? And if you get plastic versions of the tools I'm suggesting, that's good enough for this job, okay? You don't need to get fancy. Did you say you live in a rental? I do, yes. Yeah, no one's going to flip and notice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, no one's gonna. So you get that dream compound and then you put it into the, the this tray you're gonna get. And then you mm -hmm. just put a little bit of water at a time and you just stir it in. And what you're doing is just making it look like pancake batter. I don't eat it and don't cook it, but it, it looks like it, <laughs> it could be used that way. <laughs> and then you just smear it on. And then it's all about trial and error because the greatest thing about drawing compound is if you flip, if you mess it up, you can just take a wet rag and clean it off before it dries and you're good to go. It's the easiest mm -hmm. stuff to work with. And we over, like we do with everything, Landon, we overcomplicate everything and usually men are involved. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> no, for real. Yes, because for even real. with this. If you're someone who doesn't like dust, Hannah, if you have like a, a dust allergy or, you know, if anything around those lines, you don't even need to put dust in the air because that wet rag after it's all dried, you can wipe away the edges and wipe it down and it will actually take it off because it's again, it's almost like clay before you cure it. That's basically what you're doing. You're basically using clay. And then you want to make sure that when you apply it, you make sure that your hand is like holding it to distribute the the weight of the the knife that you're using evenly and if you do that with all of it like basically just a wide st stance with your hand on the the blade you'll be you'll do a great job and if it doesn't look good the first time just redo it until it looks good does that make sense hannah yeah so i am wondering does that create the same texture like so i have a knockdown kind of texture on the ceiling would it match oh, the rest of it? This is such a good, you know, honestly, this job might be even easier for you then because here's a great thing about drawing oh, compound because you can just like throw it up there and then take like a rag or a sponge and just hit it and then it'll dry in oh, that cool. texture. Yeah, like it, it oh, literally, awesome. and, and the thing is, if it doesn't look right, you could just keep trying until it looks right because drawing compound can always be taken down. Like it's, wow. it's so easy. Once the thing that will make it impossible is once it fully dries and then you, you paint it and then it becomes like you're out of luck honey you know what i mean but before <laughs> that process you're good to go and you might not even need to match it totally depending on how big this dent is like paint wise you could just use primer and it might look just fine up there yeah that sounds way easier than what i was expecting and i feel so much better about it now <laughs> no and here's the thing and if that does if none of that works there is one more backup plan and that is, you can get, um, Whole Mix is this wonderful company that makes spray on texture now. And whole, this was not whole, something, yeah, Whole, whole Mix whole, is, it, whole yeah, mix? Whole, 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 whole Mix. Whole oh my mix. God. With Honestly. Just making sure, I want to clarify, <laughs> yeah. that with an getting H, the proper items when, when they go shopping, you know. Well, let me make sure that I'm saying it right. It is Home, Whole, Whole, Whole Max, Max. <laughs> <laughs> It's great for the stripper pole, is what I'm trying to say. Home mix, <laughs> home mix usually home is great for the stripper pole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> home is where the stripper pole. Stop, <laughs> you two. Stop. I'm trying to run a wholesome <laughs> podcast. <laughs> you came with the wrong person. <laughs> I know, for real. But all that being said, if it doesn't work that way, right, if it doesn't look look perfect to you, you can get um, Home Max um, Spray on Texer, and they sell a knockdown texture spray. And it, I think it's like nine to ten dollars. It's pretty affordable. All we gotta do is make sure you're like twenty inches away when you spray it and shake it really well beforehand, and you should be good to go. Awesome. That sounds great. Okay, good. Does this help? Does this sparkle with you? Yes, I cannot <laughs> wait to have a fully intact feeling again. Oh, I can't wait. And and if this works, first of all, please call me and let me know. Okay, I want to see it. Um, if it does not work, you blame it on Lane and Cider. Yeah, it's all my fault. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds fine. Always blame the guy. <laughs> blame, blame the men. Blame the men. <laughs> Hannah, thank you so much for calling. I appreciate you.
I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for everything. You're very welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad I shared all my, my, my knowledge yeah. with you. You shared all your knowledge when it comes to the average putty size. I really, uh -huh. You're welcome. I really appreciate you. <laughs> Take care, Hannah. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. How long have you been performing, Landon? 15 years. Well, drag, doing drag for 15. I've been performing wow. since I was little, getting on stages and I, dancing I did around. burlesque for 16 years. So look at us. We're just a bunch look of old us. fogies. At we this are point. so old. <laughs> I remember when we used to be performers and you could like, you know, go to open mics and like perform and like mm -hmm. it, there was no one doing the kind of things that you and I were doing probably back in the day. Mm -hmm. And probably now not, there's like yeah. drag kings and burlesque dancers everywhere now. Everywhere. Yeah, it's it's what a wild experience. I remember I being know. the only um person at the time who was presenting as male and performing as a boy on stage. I was yeah. I was doing drag shows and burlesque shows um as the only boy because there there wasn't anyone doing that like yeah. 10 15 years ago. It's and now crazy. look. Look, yeah, you, th it. you throw a nickel and you can hit a boy lesker. <laughs> For sure, yeah. My, my best friend is a boy lesker. So, yeah, trans mask boy at, lesker. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, all, <laughs> all that being said, today is a good day. And every day is a good day to drink yourself a good root beer. And in Ooh. honor of you, Landon, I uh, went and got a root beer called Dad's Old Fashioned Root Beer. <laughs> Talking about old things. <laughs> I, I just I feel like since people probably call you a good daddy, I want to make sure that you got a daddy root beer. <laughs> I'm here for it. I do get called daddy all the time, but I don't get enough Father's Day gifts, so I'm pissed off about it. But it's oh, okay. do, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing about gender that's so weird. I love when my partners call me daddy. I love it. I I know folks have that like aversion reaction to it, but yeah. I love being called a daddy. I always think of myself as like a femme daddy. Do you know what I mean? I can see that for you. I can see that for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> right? Me in overalls and nothing else. Right. <laughs> It's, like, it's about power. It's it's unfortunately yeah. still connected to the patriarchy, but yeah, it's about all, power. Yeah. All that being said, it, I, I there's nothing more wonderful with me uh, for me than holding a toy in overalls and nothing else, and just saying, "Are you ready?" I think that's the hottest thing. I thought <laughs> we were doing a wholesome podcast. Mix oh yeah, I forgot. Going on here. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, exit. Edit it in yeah. post being a handy person i always got to come over overly repaired and here is a power tool that i definitely do not need more of like this is this is too much for me so that is, here that's we go a lot. that's a lot we're gonna open it this is too much of a bottle opener can she open it she can't open it she can of do course. so much she can is it a twist it's a twist it's a twist you know i'm really good at my job <laughs> I, I can see that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna taste it, and we're gonna let you know how how. You gonna how, taste how, how my good daddy juice? Taste my daddy. I'm gonna date. I'm. You know, this was supposed to be a wholesome podcast. <laughs> well, that's out the window. Is it creamy? Is my daddy juice creamy? It's very creamy. <laughs> I would say, you you produce the most creamy daddy juice that I have ever had. <laughs> and I, if there's ever any children listening. They aren't anymore. Okay, uh, yeah. I think we're gonna we're gonna listen to more calls. You ready? I am ready. Hi, Mercury. Uh, my name is Harry. Uh, my pronouns are they them, and I was wondering. Um, I have a thermostat, a digital thermostat in my home, and it says change UV lamp. And I've never heard of that. So I would like to know what that means and how I can change it. Landon, right. have you ever heard of a UV uh, lamp in someone's uh, HVAC system? No. I, if, you, if I hadn't heard that voicemail right now and you said the word HVAC system, I would have stopped you right there. Do, do you know what an HVAC is? Do you no. know what that means? No. Basically, 
uh, here's the short term. I, you know, someone's going to yell at me in the comment section. Uh, but HVAC oh, don't basically is they, <laughs> they do. They will find a way. Exactly. Also, as a professional, I should know exactly what HVAC means. But this is what I'm going to say right now. My team is going to look up what HVAC stands for, and they're going to awesome. tell me in a second. But I'm going to tell is. you what what HVAC is. And HVAC is about cooling and heating. That's what HVAC is. Okay. okay. So um, that that's basically all it is. And there's a newer thing happening now where people are installing like a UV lamp to clean the air, essentially. And oh. UV lamps, yeah, we'll get into it in a second. But there's a whole, this opens up a whole bunch of things. It, so many questions are running through my head about this. So we have to mm -hmm. call. So let's give them a call and see where they're at. Okay. Sounds good to me. Hey, Ari, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing go so good. So you have a UV lamp in your HVAC system problem, huh? <laughs> yes, I do. HVAC. Unfortunately. Heating. HVAC. Heating. Ventilation. Ventilation. Air conditioning. Air conditioning, sure. I did <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We Googled it before we called you. Aaron. No, I did it. No, we did it. I just knew that. Yeah, you just knew it. We knew it. We definitely, we definitely just randomly knew that. No, yes. I'm going to tell you right now, um, Ari, this is a really new issue. Um, so yeah. the air is going to come through that ventilation system and it's going to be hit by that UV lamp and it's going to kill bacteria. That's the whole premise of what a UV lamp is supposed to do. So it's supposed to be basically, um, you know, purify the air, right? An air purifier. Now, does this okay. work? This does it work is a question we're going to get asked a lot. I found research from Columbia University, and I got to tell you, it does sound like there is evidence that this does work for most bacteria. And some have even suggested that it works for COVID-19. Um, all of that being said, this has been in the works for the last decade or so, but it hasn't really been largely on the market. Okay. So this is something pretty new. Uh, it, do you live, is this a rental or is this a property you own? Um, it's a, it's a home. How long have you lived there? My friend? Uh, I've lived here for about three months. Yep. There you go. This has been freshly installed for you then. Anytime that you have. Um, any type of appliance or any type of thing that's new, okay? This is what you should all do. You should look up, like find the part number if you can, and then look up the brand, the make and model of it. You might find the manual somewhere, and it will kind of walk you through the uniqueness of that said thing. So same thing with microwaves, same things with refrigerators and dishwashers and garbage disposals and all of that stuff. It's going to tell you a lot more than what I can as someone who doesn't know the specific make and model because all of it is going to be specific, okay? Where do you find the okay. model number is a great question. Thank you for asking, Mercury. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not where you think. Not, Not where, where you think. think. Not, honestly, Landon, true. <laughs> I figured because why would you ask that to yourself? And honestly, I'm honest. so... Landon, I am so proud of you right now. Um, you basically, you can usually either take the cover off or you can like open a part of the cover up and inside there should be some number, something there, like a serial number or anything. Usually if you Google the make and then whatever numbers you can find, you'll find a manual somewhere. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, uh, I kind of just ripped it off the wall. Um, <laughs> I do admire you for being confident enough to rip it off the wall. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I've well, done this before. Okay. <laughs> it goes right in. <laughs> well, that being said, that being said, now there's another real possibility. Okay, that the thermostat okay. could be equipped to handle a UV lamp, but you don't have a UV lamp in your system. There's a, there's a chance that that could be it. The lamp looks kind of like um like one of those old long elongated bulbs. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Do they sell those light bulbs like just at a hardware store? You have to specialty order them. 
I think right now, not a lot of hardware stores actually have them. I they're mm-hmm. they're re- I looked it up last night on like my local hardware store, and they didn't have it in inventory. So I do think this right now is an HVAC thing. I do think you want to call up an HVAC specialist, maybe talk to them and have some feedback, uh, and kind of see what they think. You know, a, a lot of times you can get a free quote, and if they go come out and take a quote and take a look at what it is. Maybe they'll even tell you while they're out there, oh, hey, you know, it's just the light bulb. It's just this lamp that you got to replace. And here's a part number kind of thing. Does that make sense? But like, if yeah. you do have someone come over, follow them everywhere and see where the stuff is that they're looking at. So that way you'll learn where the filter yep. system is. So that way you can see the C on your own if how if the light bulb is in there. Not. Like follow them so you can learn where the stuff is too. Yes. I, I always say hover on the contractors, mm-hmm. right? And once they're doing their work and stuff, you can always ask them, hey, you know, do you want me to leave or do you want some, you know, time? It, that, all that stuff is fine, but it's it's your home and it's their time and you're paying for their time. So it's okay to like mine information and knowledge from contractors. I highly suggest it, to be honest. Um, and a lot of times they'll tell you, what's going on they might even be able to look at the system and tell you right out of the gate oh yeah you don't have this and that's all you need to know basically okay but that being said it does not mean that the system isn't working at all it just means that your air isn't being purified through that lamp is all it means okay okay i hope that helps you you. does that help you yeah it does absolutely it does god i'm happy Landon, do you think I did a good job? <laughs> I think you did a great job. I think you did good. I need, I, I need, I... I need to pick me up from that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for calling, Ari. Hey, thank you so much. Hope you get your air. Thank clean, you, Mercury. Ari. <laughs> Take care, Ari. Thank yeah, what so a great much. name. How did I not make that joke until now? <laughs> and you didn't even make it. I made it. <laughs> you made it. Way to go, Landon. Oh, okay, you take care, Ari. Bye, bye. You as well. Bye. Have you, what do you, what do you feel about your air? How is your air quality over there? <laughs> um, I live in a big ma- ma- major city by, by a very busy road. So my air is filthy. filthy oh, good. Filthy, filthy. Yeah. I mean, just I like, just a- like our mouths. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, even when I was growing up, we used to have smog alerts all the time in um, mm. where I live and where we weren't allowed as children to go to school that day or to play outside because the air quality of that particular particular day was so bad. So in the morning news, it would tell you, all right, um, our smog alert system is at this level today. So your kids can play or we're having a smog alert. Don't let your kids yeah. play outside today. Yeah, I, I got to I got to tell you that I, I don't know enough about the UV lamps to tell mm-hmm. people if they should do it or not, but I do know enough about regular filter systems. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you right now that what I know is that when we're dealing with filter systems, it's kind of a, it's called MERV, M-E-R-V is kind of the term that we use when we're classifying kind of filters. Mm-hmm. And when we're dealing with anything above a MERV 13, will uh, clean the air pretty properly. It's what we were using largely across the country with a larger HVAC systems during COVID-19 okay. because MERV was small enough, it has small enough openings to prevent those particles from coming through, but not oh. everything, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what to you benefit what you're saying, right? Now, the, the UV uh, lamps, not positive to how that all works. That is, on a, honestly, everyone should do their own research when it comes to what makes them feel comfortable in their own home. Mm-hmm. But especially when we're dealing with smog, it's becoming more of, an, more of an issue across the country when it comes to smog and our air quality. Even here in tropical Madison, Wisconsin, we now have air alerts on a regular basis for even for playgrounds and et cetera as well for schools. Yeah. So it's it's becoming more of an issue everywhere. And I think it's good for us to be good consumers and understand what the MERV system is and when it comes to our home. So I advise a MERV 13 and above, um, make sure that every system is going to be a little bit different. If you don't have an HVAC system that is designed for that, you could be actually hurting the system to make it work too hard to get through the filter. We watched your whole episode, the whole season. Uh, back when we used to watch Dragula a lot, we don't really watch Dragula as much anymore, but like we watched every single episode and I kept remembering like, oh, man, if Landon wins this, that's going to be fucking crazy, but there's yeah. no way Landon's going to win this. Drag Kings don't win shit. 
<laughs> and I remember each episode getting closer and closer to the reality that it might happen. How did it feel for you, Landon? Incredible. I mean, I feel like it was like not easy for me, but it was like to me, it was like the obvious decision. <laughs> In your, <laughs> yes, in your season. When I, when I look back at it, when I look back, like in the moment, I had um, a lot of like self doubt and, and and stress and pressure and so much that was clouding my my vision of what the perception would be. Um, yeah. So I was just so focused and so nervous and so in my head about everything. Um, and even when it was airing, I was still not like really seeing the outside perspective. Years later um i can look back and really think about it and being like yeah that seems right that's that's right that's how it should have gone mm -hmm, for sure i will never forget when you were the werewolf i'll never forget yeah. that was one of the, the very, most so, terrific looks i've ever seen from thanks. any drag performer Thank and you. every every stereotype that has ever been uttered about drag kings you have destroyed and then some what Thank is you. it that's kind of my goal that's how i do it i when I first started to see that I was gaining um, respect from like my peers and audiences and stuff, I still would hear um, and you, you, can, you can never not listen to the haters, right? You always, I mean, you can not listen, you can choose not to listen to them, but you're still gonna hear them. You may not listen, but you're yeah. gonna hear them. And I would hear critiques here and there, or even like on videos, that would be posted the people talking in the background next to the camera that didn't know that you could hear them they're a little yeah. mm, it's a drag king i don't know mm, like you can just hear their anticipation already hating before i even stepped on stage you know yeah. that's assumptions made so i would take all of the list i would make myself a mental list of all of the things that people would say against me because i'm a drag king you know, drag kings don't do this they don't do that they don't do that they don't do that this long list of things and i made it a checklist and i'm gonna be like well i'm gonna take that off the list you can't say i don't kings don't wear wigs um you can take the lot oh they don't wear enough makeup uh they don't put enough uh into unique costuming they don't tell they're not performers or not this or not that i just took everything off the list so that if they still didn't like me it's because either they just don't like my drag which is fine you don't have to like my drag i don't like every other type of drag or every drag performer style of drag either or they're just being um misogynist because of the patriarchy it's like those either you just don't like my drag or you just you have a, an outside reason and it's not always because they just don't like my drag they just have outside it sounds like it sounds like a lot of the style that you developed was largely because of the the way that people were projecting their own image of what drag kings must be on you like they yeah, were like so you yeah like it was almost like your style came from this like um proving ground like i am going Preemptive. to prove that i need to take up space exactly and that that's such a a woman in a man's world type of thing to do we have to always prove ourselves constantly over and over and over and over and over again that we deserve to take this space or have that position or be this boss or have that job but oh, constantly you don't just get the job and you're like i'm here everyone respects me like the guy would you have to constantly be proving yourself over and over again and i still get horrible messages and comments on my stuff and and really? and and uh, uh, these and even from um old like people from that just aren't ready for change and push back on change as you know you're in especially um living in it off the binary and and being proud of you living off of that binary and speaking about it as much as you do people are so so attached to the binary even our yeah. own community and the old school reality of it i even have old like drag kings from the 80s well that kind of back in the day drag kings didn't do all that color and all that they're just way too feminine for my kind of style of drag and it's like cool how many drag shows do you go to these days probably none you're not supporting the yeah. drag community anymore so you're, what your point is val is invalid if you're not supporting somehow whether it's at a show in real life or online by likes and comments and shares you're not supporting so i don't really care what you have to say anyway <laughs> yeah 100 percent. speak scream on the top of the rooftops <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate you being here now are you ready for the next call with me i am yes let's do it
You've reached the Handyman Hotline. All our operator is currently assisting other customers. She might be one heck of a lady, but she's only one lady, after all. While you're waiting, uh, why don't you pick up something to read? Actually, you know what? Settle down. Settle down. I'll read you something myself. All right. How about this? A name is kind of like a comfortable pair of walking shoes. It will be a lifelong companion if sturdily constructed, and after a while it may become nearly unnoticeable if it's a good fit. Lots of people change their names for reasons having nothing to do with gender. Choosing a name is a highly individual matter and can be done with a sense of joy and integrity. Think of the person you are inside and try giving him a name that would feel good. Maybe it's John Lennon's first name because you looked up to him as an adolescent. Maybe it's your dad's name or somebody else you always liked a lot. Who knows? A name is a name is a name is a name. But it's your name, just the same. Riveting stuff and very good advice from writer Kevin Horowitz. But what if I were to tell you that little snippet there wasn't a Tumblr post, but it was newsprint from 1988. FTM International, originally just FTM, was founded in 1986 in San Francisco by Lou Sullivan, an author and activist who helped usher in the concept of sexuality being different from gender identity. The FTM newsletter started being published quarterly in 1987 and had 67 issues printed before it went the way of the other newsprint dinosaurs in 2008. But what a publication. It had articles. It had personal ads. It had comics. And most importantly, it had resources. Trans men from all over the world wrote in to let their fellow dudes know where they'd hit the jackpot, whether that meant finding a therapist that actually listened to them, scoring testosterone on the cheap, or even just coming across a good pair of... Manly shoes, darling, it's just so hard to find a good Oxford in a men's six, you know? It's true that community blossomed in the age of the internet, but let's not give Reddit credit for inventing the wheel. The foundation for these communities was laid down way before we came along, y'all. And the FTM newsletter was finding its readers the old-fashioned way, one copy at a time. If you found this interesting, check out the GLBT Historical Society website's digital collection of FTM International newsletters. They have archived records from 1987 to 1992. That's glbthistory.org. And as the boss lady likes to say, you're worth the time it takes to learn a little history. Here's Mercury. Hi, Mercury. My name's Sarah McConnell from Oregon. I just bought a house with my wife a few years ago. Yay, we're no longer renters. But we have one really weird problem that we can't figure out. We've got rolling closet doors in our master bedroom. Two of them manage to stay on their track. But one of them falls off of its track and does that annoying thing that big mirrored doors do when they fall off their track, and they clunk, clunk. They almost lose our toes scares the pants off my wife every time it happens. That's we a good thing. We cannot figure out how to get it to stay on. you have any idea how to help us, thanks so much. We love you. Have a good day. Be fabulous. <laughs> I will be fabulous. <laughs> what a fabulous question, too. Yes. So, unfortunately, Sarah was not able to be reached during this call. But that being said, I can answer this question still, Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to say right out of the gate here, Landon, is that you can find out this answer in my book, Safe and Sound, a Render's Friendly Guide to Home Repair by Mercury Stardust. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Know. Know, not the knockoff ones that people were selling. In yeah, the not the, the fake copies. One. Yeah. There are so many fake copies of my that's book. So it's gross. wild. It's we so live gross. In a, we live in an era of the AI generative book era now, mm. and just don't go to Amazon and buy your books. Buy your books through bookshop.org. <laughs> Which or, is so, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. But it's I will so say ironic. this. It's so ironic I, since Amazon started off as an online bookstore. And now you can't even trust them to buy your books from them anymore. Well, it's here's so here's the horrible. sad truth. So much of the market is saturated by Amazon that I'm told I'm not even supposed to say that. I'm so, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to, because I'm me, I do want to do what I want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, but like 90% of all my book sales, and remember I'm a number one New York times bestselling author. Okay. 90% of all my book sales last year went, came from Amazon, but we were still number one on Barnes and Noble for a week. 
number one on bookshop.org and all of that stuff. But we were still, that, that's how many books on a daily basis are being sold on Amazon. That's it's so wild. Crazy. Yeah. But all of that being said, there, if you get my book from bookshop.org or an independent bookstore near you, <laughs> yes. you can find out this answer. Okay. This is a, this is a really wonderful, this is actually kind of one that you won't get most other places because this is more like a hack rather than a fix. So do you know what a set screw is? If I said a set screw, do you know what that is, Landon? That sounds like when you've been married for long enough, you have to schedule in your screws. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, you're right, but not about this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I will say that a set screw is basically to hold things in place. That's all it is. That's an that's a essential idea. If you go to any doorknob right now and you look in the side of the doorknob, you'll eventually find a little screw or a little pin or something that is holding things in place. And that is called a set screw. Okay. okay. What we're going to do with this, with this uh, sliding door or the sliding mirror rather is make ourselves a set screw. And you're going to go in there and where the railing is, right? Where the railing is, you are going to install a little bit of a self-tapping screw. Now, in my book, it's going to give you the exact measurements and all that stuff. I think you, I even did a video online about it too. So if you don't, don't want to spend the money, you don't have to. You can go on YouTube and find out. I think um, to, to find a video on the self-tapping screw, you have to go on OnlyFans. No. <laughs> Stop! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Self but you're wrong about valid. this. <laughs> All that being said, though, they, 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 um, you can basically just strategically place a screw in a place that is going to, like, if you go inside of the, the rail of where everything holds, you can put a screw in there that will prevent it from going off. Of the rail. Does that make sense? Landon? That makes sense. Yeah, like a track. yeah. Like, like a, you're like, gonna see yeah. it in my video, and you're gonna see it in the book, and I'll show you properly and how it works. But all you're gonna do, and it's gonna be a three dollar fix. If you have a drill, it's a three dollar fix. It's so quick and easy, and it's life changing. And honestly, if you wanted, if you want to go one further. Um, take those um that railing off and replace this whole thing together with a triple by bat pass door. So um, a triple bypass is basically uh, a sliding door mechanism that will go in the, the they, they, they have like, um, instead of a normal sliding door where you have like one big opening and it can call kind of, the wheels can fall off that uh -huh. said opening. You have a, a triple bypass that has two railings on either side that make it impossible for it to come off its rails. Uh... It won't come off. And they're really easy to install. I mean, this is like a 30 minute job and yeah. anybody can do it. It comes with instructions and everything. So I highly recommend just upgrading to something that is going to be a lot more friendly, A, to your, your closet mirrors, but mm -hmm. B, to your feet. You know what I mean? Um, and that, that should help. So I hope that helps this person, but I hope that actually helps anyone else who's listening. Yeah, that sounds like great advice. Yeah, no, not too bad, right? It's almost yeah. like I know a thing or two. That's crazy. Who are you? <laughs> Who the fuck? Look, look at me. <laughs> uh, okay, all that being said, are we ready to call the last person, Landon? Yes, please. Okay, let's get to it. Hi, my name is Linda. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, recently, my apartment building had a huge leak, um, or a huge flood, rather, from mm -hmm. uh, a, water, a pipe that burst in the building. Um, it caused a lot of flooding to that damaged a lot of units. Mine wasn't too bad, but um, I, was, I was at a loss for what to do first. So do you have any um, tips for how to deal with a flooding situation? Because um, sometimes you don't have time for <laughs> the maintenance guy to come to come address it and you need to do something right then and there. 
Thanks. Have you ever had this kind of thing happen to you? Landon? No, and it's like a nightmare to it have is, all your stuff soaking and and the universe well, knows what's in those pipes and where that pipe came yeah, from and lad, every oh we oh. had a very good friend a very good friend of mine in, my, in real life named Lumi uh last year had this happen I think the the New Year's Day last year 2023 and it was a disaster so often what happens in these scenarios is that um a if you don't know where the water shot off is and this is really important i mean we should know where the water shot off in our apartments are and you know in individual rooms if there is access to it uh down in the basement oftentimes you'll have that even in apartment buildings you might be able to find a shut off anything like that is important to know when you first move into the space right we've joked about this in the studio but you could sell a whole book off of oh what is happening right now and here are all the emergency things you should do right now <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. because it is a panic it is absolutely a panic um so all that being said uh do you want to call this person and see what we can do yeah i would love to see what you can do because i have no uh, idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool i would like to see what i'm going to do too let's yes, do it please. linda how's it going Hello, I am good. How are you? I'm doing so good. Thank you for asking such a really good question. Also, kind of one that makes everyone who's listening terrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what? So first and foremost, has anything changed since you called us? Well, I mean, for now, everything seems to be fine. I think, at least for my unit. Um, I, I was like the, I, I managed to sop up all the flooding that the crisis is over for me. Anyways, some of my neighbors are a different story. Um, yeah, but the main thing is like when it happened, it, like, I wasn't quite sure what all was important for me to do or keep in mind, especially since yeah. there was flooding coming in through the walls and I was worried about like outlets and heating elements sure. and things like that. Do you have, do you have renter's insurance by the way? I do. They require it in my building. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm happy that that's the case. Um, and I hope you are getting progress in that field sometimes, especially this one, especially burst pipes can be such a pain in the butt with insurance companies i'm not even sure what to do insurance wise like if it if have you have I you called your insurance company yet not yet but i probably should oh, you should you should you yeah. should absolutely call because like it, here's the thing you want to get people on your side right and this might be a claim that comes from the building and the property management companies all together but you should get the information and you should mine as much information from the insurance company as possible and start putting the okay. ducks in a row just in case. Because what happens a lot of times is that they're going to try to find who's to blame, right? right. Now, installation mm -hmm. or the lack of preventative maintenance is actually to be blamed. Yeah. And, I, you know, and it's, it's kind of hard in this case, too, because I think, like, there's been a lot of pipes bursting in where I live because there's a cold snap right now and the temperatures are lower than, you know, these buildings were built for. Oh yeah. Where, where so, do you live? Where do you live, Linda? I'm in Seattle. So it's historically oh. not got, we've not gotten like very cold winters. We do now. Yeah. But... What's, the temperature, what's the temperature right now in Seattle? Right now isn't too bad. It's like in the 30s, but when this happened, yeah. they were like, you know, it was like 15 degrees or something. That's so crazy that you think that's cold. <laughs> no, I mean, see, I'm from Chicago, so I know what real cold is, oh, but oh, I've also good. been here for long enough. And I, I know that that isn't that cold here. <laughs> I'm in Wisconsin where the last three days we've had like negative five to negative 10 degree oh, weather. No, I know. So all I don't hear a family. negative in front of this temperature, and I'm like immediately, ooh, that's yeah. summer. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Southern California, so. Oh, wow, really? What's your temperature right now, Landon? Oh, it's so cold. It's like 50 degrees. I want you to die. Poor <laughs> that is wild. I was in San Diego like a month or so ago, and it was like 70 degrees there, and people were in sweatshirts. And I was like, yeah. oh, what are we doing? What sweatshirts is this? Sweatshirts and shorts. Sweatshirts, shorts, and sandals. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's absolutely that's, that's nuts. That's the Southern California like winter I, outfit. <laughs> people were down. freezing with winter coats on in like sixty degree <laughs> weather, know, and I am sweating. I was sweating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, back on the topic <laughs> at hand. Okay, so you're you're asking a really good question, and I want to make sure we get to that full question. But also, like, I want to make sure you're okay. And it sounds like you're in a good place. Um, I'm going to say right right yeah. now, before we get too deep, deep in this, did you, has any maintenance technician been in your your rental or anything like that yet? Have they checked out your space entirely? No, they haven't. It's, it's strange. Well, I mean, part of it is, I think that they haven't? maintenance has just been busy. No, they haven't. I think they've been busy oh. checking on the other units that are affected more. I mean, I've been talking to them because I run into them on the property a lot because yeah. I work from home. So I'm just like here all the time. And, I you know, still, I told them that yeah. like, there, was, there was some flooding in the bathroom and that was about it. So maybe they just decided I wasn't uh, important. I don't know. Linda, are you on the top or are you in the bottom of the unit? Like, I'm on the you- bottom. So that's, yeah. So that's the thing is that the burst happened on a top floor and it all it all like flowed down to yep. where I am. Yeah. So I, I'm going to tell you right now, now I'm not in this building, so I couldn't tell you exactly what I would be concerned with, but as a maintenance technician, I'm going to tell you right now, people would be crazy not to check your unit. Um, and the yeah. reason why is because mold, my friends, mm. uh, by the time, here's the thing about mold, especially black mold. You won't uh, see it until it's yep. too late. And this is yep. what people don't get. When you see it, yep. you've already been breathing it for months. For months. Yeah. Many more. You know, especially when you start having this problem, it's really hard to get rid of mold unless you get, like, you literally rip out the drywall and put a new in. Trying to get people to actually do that work can take months oh, to yeah. actually. Oh, le- yeah. it, no, I'm you aware. Get so <laughs> many people involved in order to get, you know, mold mitigation is such. It's a yeah. whole. It's a whole cottage industry is mold mitigation now in the United States. It's it's yeah. such a wild thing. Yeah. If, if this is the, the case, I would hope they take a look and maybe take a look at the inside of your walls and kind of see where it's at. And at the very least, you should still have like um, dehumidifiers in your space running. That was the thing that they mentioned is that they were going to try to get dehumidifiers running, at least in the hallways. And I haven't seen them. I don't know what's going on. That should already be running. Those dehumidifiers should have been on day one, maybe night one. And, and yeah, a lot of like, because. The main thing- they they had um they brought in like a water extraction crew, but I haven't really seen oh, anything else besides that. Yeah, and, and again, I don't know what their plan is, or and they're gonna know their building better than me. But I always do get really suspicious of this idea that they're not immediately in there with giant fans and uh, dehumidifiers. If that isn't your first response to anything with a flood, even if you're not the one who's the re- the recipient of the largest part of the water, I do but think the, it's a little suspicious. The largest of part of the water is the largest part of the water is the unit directly across the hallway from me. They were hit the worst, and I haven't seen anything yeah, it, along it those may be, them either. It, it, that might be one of the reasons why they didn't go to you right away. You know what I mean? That, like yeah. Their resources could be tapped so much that they're going to try to get to you as soon as they can, but they might just be tapped. You know what I mean? But all that being said, what, do, what does someone do if this happens in real time? Okay. The first thing you want to do is open up every faucet and try to make sure you you relieve the pressure itself. And then the next thing you should do is immediately start dry the drying process. And this is where you get the big fans. This is when you get the dehumidifiers. And then the third thing, and the thing that you should still do, is get insurance involved. And the sooner you have it, the better. Okay. And if you don't have renter's insurance, to anyone who's listening. I would get renter's insurance, especially if we're talking about, like, if you live in a colder climate, you should have it. You should really have it. 
Especially with a lot of renters insurance. That is suddenly cold when it didn't used to be. <laughs> yeah, like now that's happening a lot in Texas. I've been recommending this to a yeah. lot to people who have been followers of mine in Texas. You know, their systems aren't always necessarily prepared for this, especially their like electrical system isn't mm -hmm. able to handle the high demand of all that heat going in people's homes for them, you know, like all at once. That could be a lot. All of that being said, those are the things I would do right away. Now, knowing where the shutoffs are, are really important. So in a rental, even having, like if this was in a bathroom and this was like you had a flood from your toilet or something, knowing where the shutoff from I actually that is important. That happened like the week before and I learned that tip about turning off the faucet from your book. Oh, really? Good. I would say yeah. this. When you first move into a place, when you first move in everywhere, there's two things you should know. To an apartment, when you first move into a home, or you first move into a manufactured home, whatever it is, you should know where the main shutoff water is, the individual shutoff um, parts of your actual rooms, and you should know where the power sources are. Because things are going to happen. They're just going, life happens sometimes and it comes unexpectedly um, and better safe than sorry. Now, what do you do in trying to spot this before it happens? I Googled this before I called you, Linda. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not going to lie. I found out some of this information from allstate.com. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's good when an insurance company is like, please don't let us lose money. Do these things. <laughs> <laughs> These are some really good ideas, though. I love them. Um, if there is little to no water pressure from your sink, showers, and faucets, it could be um, a burst pipe waiting to happen. If there is frost buildup on any exposed pipes, if there's damp sections of drywall, carpet, and ceilings, that's a really good one. But here's the thing. If there's damp sections of drywall and carpet and ceilings, you are really close to something bad happening. Like if you are, if you're going up to your wall and then both the wall and the, the carpet is soaked, you need to call right now. And I wouldn't even, I don't call insurance. You call like the fire department. Uh, if you're not able to get a hold of an emergency plumber, often we're not. A lot of um, people who are in um, the fire department will have emergency shut off you know, information when it comes to plumbing and when it comes to electrical stuff. Oh, so in okay. a worst case That's scenario, in a worst case scenario, that is who you can call. Like, I think my pipe is going to burst. I don't know what to do. They will come over and at least you'll have someone else in your home who might be able to take care of it if something happens, you know, and not an end all be all solution, but boy, do you feel a lot less alone when those kind of things happen. But all of that being said, um, in this scenario, you said it was a sprinkler system that did this, huh? Yeah. Boy, someone's going to lose a job. <laughs> how, long you lived, how long have you lived uh -oh. there for? I've lived here like three years. Thing is, is that, that I've been worried about is, so it's actually been very well maintained in most of that time. But the guy who was the head of maintenance retired a couple months ago, and I was wondering if things were going to get suddenly worse. Yeah, here's the fun thing about people who are in maintenance. Landon can maybe agree with me or disagree with me when it comes to just the drag world. But when any sometimes someone um, leaves an industry, if they've been there for a long time, right? The power struggle is real. <laughs> this is when you find out that everything was being held together with rubber bands and duct tape. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I was suspecting as much. <laughs> yeah, so I think this yeah, is a uh, maintenance person did not do what they were supposed to do to weatherize the system, and it burst a pipe. So, and you you're gonna find out for me. You're gonna find out, and yep. <laughs> uh, we'll see from there. Yeah, guess so. Yeah, you know, it's fun. It's fun. But hey, I'm happy that you're safe. Um, what? tends to happen is that they will give you a date they are liars if they say it's going to be done in two months <laughs> i want i'm telling you i've heard this multiple times <clears throat> since i've been on the internet i've heard this from a lot of people people be like oh they told me two months they're bold-faced liars it doesn't get fixed in two months hon. that if there is yeah. damage in the walls and the floors and the ceilings it will be six months at the best a friend of ours last year this happened to and it 
it, it, it got to a point where they ended up having to find a new place after six months of just having this property management company drag their feet mm -hmm. over and over and over again. I tell yeah. the people who work in these industries, when they ask me these questions, what should they do in these scenarios, put up the tenant in a different unit, in a different place, or you pay for them to leave and go somewhere else. Allow them to break the lease. Sometimes yeah. they don't even let you break the lease in these instances because they try to say it's like, you know, an act of God or whatever thing is in the contract. Um, but it's an absolute bull crappery uh, and I'm not a fan of it. So Linda, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you take care and then everything goes well from here. Okay. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Take care, Linda. Bye-bye. At least when I'm talking like this, at least they can look at your amazing like paint on your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like disassociating because like, I have no idea what's, what's going on. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> For my dog the, truth, here the truth comes out ah that's so funny landon i just want to say i have appreciated you so much on this podcast today thank you thank for being you. such a good i appreciate you asking me to be a part of it and to be one of your first like guests is such an honor so thank you you know i will say this again landon you can continuously prove over and over again that drag can be for everybody and that spaces should be taken up by everybody and it really means a lot that the, the work you're doing, what you're doing, and what you stand for as a performer and as a person. And I just want to remind you that I know sometimes it's really hard in the world mm -hmm. um, to be who we are, but I'm so proud of you for taking up space with me. So you're a badass. Thank you. You are too, bitch. <laughs> oh, God, I am. <laughs> <laughs> all uh, that being said everybody thank you for tuning into this wonderful episode of maintenance is a drag i has always been the trans handyman thank you so much for tuning in and remember until next time you're worth the time it takes to learn a new skill bye-bye everybody you're worth the time it takes to be you she'll teach you how to